Hi everyone, my name is Sebastian and I'm just going to make a very quick video to show you how to create this, which is basically a 3D model showcased within a web browser. Now this is powered by WebGL and 3JS, but we're not going to actually code all this from scratch. We're just going to use a tool to allow us to import a 3D model on the web. So I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible just to show you exactly what steps are needed to do this. Um, so the first step you want to do is get a 3D model. Okay, so I just went on Turbo Squid and got this Garmin watch. Uh, cost me a little bit of money, but that's okay. Uh, it's a nice Garmin watch that's a 3D model. Okay, second step, you wanna go on Pixatronics. So if you just go on Google and type in Pixatronics, this is the homepage of Pixatronics, which is real-time 3D graphics. This is basically, from what I understand, a framework that a lot, which is built on top of 3JS, which is built on top of WebGL that allows you to easily manipulate and render 3D graphics right within the web browser, within the Canvas element. Now, Canvas is an HTML element that allows you to render 3D graphics and particles and other things that are very interesting on the web browser, and you could add text around it. So the, the result of what you could do with things like this is that you could use the Canvas element to render the 3D model, and you could add text around it with HTML. So as you scroll down, you could even animate the 3D model within Canvas. So this is probably set up as a position fixed or absolute. And then the text is simply created and appeared around it. And what, what, how the text is appearing is it's probably using GSAP because that's what allows you to animate the text to appear within the web browser as you're scrolling down and manipulating the Canvas uh, element. So you're, you're basically manipulating the 3D model within Canvas. So this is the type of result that you can create. Um, first step to do is to go on Pixatronics. So Pixatronics is a website that allows you to re render real-time 3D graphics within the web. Um, it's a company, but the actual tool, the actual framework or toolkit that we're going to use is called WebGI. So this is how realistic the 3D models look. I'm just going to show you the piece of jewelry that it, that's going to show you here, so you could see just um, like we'll see it here. Yeah, see how realistic that looks? Or it's pretty nice, it's like highly rendered, right? So, okay, so we go to Web WebGI SDK. So it is an SDK, well, let's go to the latest version. This is the uh, editor on the web browser, similar to a cloud-based editor. What we wanna do is so we go to downloads folder. This is the downloaded files that we have from the, from the 3D artist. We wanna use the downloaded OBJ files because that's the standardized files for 3D artists. We could also use FBX, but OBJ will work just fine. It's like a standardized 3D file formats. And now if you open this, this is basically the files that the 3D artists will supply. And this is created using, using 3D software. So we just drag the folder up, up in here and uh, look. So we get the 3D model rendered in real time. We could adjust all the settings. There's a lot of settings here we could adjust like anti-aliasing, export, all that stuff. If you go to picking, I'd actually want to go with, uh, if you go to scene, we want to remove the ground and we also want to remove the uh, the background or actually clip the background. That's what we want to do. Okay, so that's that. I also went with something pre-configured so I adjusted the lighting a little bit to give it more detail. Then we want to go to export. We also could create animations with this. We'd like the, like in that example you saw with a camera. So we could create animations with this, but we're just gonna export and create something very basic. So you wanna export a GLB file. We also wanna compress it with Draco. So we have Draco compression. So let's just export the GLB file. It's gonna export it. So that this tool allows you to, to edit all those settings, but we're gonna have a GLB file. If you look at this GLB file in the code editor, it's basically all pretty much almost binary code. But if we uh, look at how, how heavy the file format is, it's about 19.9 .9 megabytes or about 20 megabytes. Fairly light for a web browser, nothing too heavy. Um, okay, so what we wanna do next is we wanna go to, whoops, um, we wanna go to uh, Pixatronics and we wanna go to Get Started. Here in introduction, they basically have uh, a starter template, create a new project using the WebGI starter template on GitHub. We wanna click on that. Then we could download the code, download zip, click the code, download zip, minimize this, go into downloads folder, open this up. This is basically the, uh, the folder 
that we have here. We want to open up he this. This is the template from uh, Pixatronics. We could rename it to something like WebGI uh, Garmin. Okay, so if we open this up in a code editor, if we look at the readme, we want to run npm install or npm run dev. So we want to open up terminal. Okay, and we're just going to stop this. We're going to clear this. We're going to cd into this folder. We're just going to cd into it, run npm install to install all the dependencies that we need to basically run uh, the 3D uh, graphics. So that's already done. Then we're going to run npm run dev. I believe you need something like maybe Node.js to do this. Uh, so maybe you have to install Node.js. I'm not too sure. So we're going to just go to that local host. So we're going to go here to the local host. We're going to go here, open up a new tab, go to local host. Now basically this is the demo from the, from the existing website that allows you to render this uh, watch but what we're going to basically all have to all we have to do now is just replace this watch with the Garmin watch so if we go to the uh, files uh, if we go to assets uh, we just open up this and what we want to do is rename the scene folder so we could go uh, call it something like Garmin watch something like that drag this into the assets folder open this up in a code editor, make sure it's there. Then we go to source, we go to index.ts, which stands for TypeScript. TypeScript is a layer on, written on top of JavaScript. We want to basically rename this to Garmin watch. And then when we save, we reload. And uh, actually, hold on a sec, did we? Ah, we, we didn't rename this properly. So it should be Gar Garmin watch. That should work. Maybe if we refresh. Yeah, there we go. So it does work. So uh, it just, yeah, it just, we had to just rename the file. So um, there we go. We have the uh, Garmin watch, um, you know, um, created within the web browser. Uh, we could rotate it from any angle. This is a local host. Once you want to run this on a live production server, we would go to the uh, readme and then we would run npm run build. You would build up your uh, your your full, your, uh, your JavaScript and all your, uh, your, all your code. You could remove this box and add text around it. You start animate, you could start animating the, wa the watch and the um, WebGI uh, uh, toolkit or framework and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so um, that's how simple it is hope you enjoyed um, all right thanks take care bye